Hey gang and welcome to another Animal Crossing video, I'm Crossing Channel and one of the most surprising updates in the 2.0 version for me was the fact they introduced new mystery tour islands that Cap'n will take you to. Not only are these amazing for brand new resources, different seasons and more, you also get serenaded by Cap'n which is a huge bonus. I really love these and there's so many really interesting and rare islands that you'll want to know about. This also includes some pretty secret islands that most people haven't seen. It's also possible that you may not have unlocked some of these rare islands yet, and I'll explain how you can do that. So let's take a look at the best and rarest Animal Crossing New Horizons mystery islands that you can visit via Cap'n. So as I'm sure you know by now, Cap'n will take you to these new mystery islands which will cost you 1000 Nook Miles and you can only visit one per day. There's actually a whole bunch of these and they appear to change in layout almost every time so there's definitely a ton of variants that you can experience. But there are certain types of islands that you'll want to explore. There are normal islands that you can get which are the most common ones and then there are the rarer islands. For example, it seems like the normal islands have a 78% chance of being found, whereas the rare islands have a 22% chance of being found, and there's actually even more unlock requirements that I'll explain later on in this video. But first though, what are the normal islands that you can find in Animal Crossing New Horizons? Well, of course, one that you've all probably seen by now is the basic standard island. This is nothing too exciting, honestly. Sadly, it is just a pretty plain island, but you can find gyroid fragments here, so that's really cool all the same. And you can't find these gyroid fragments on the normal Nook Mile ticket islands, so if you want to get them, this is a great place to do so. This is also where you meet Brewster for the first time, so you'll probably remember going there then. You can also find islands with crops on them. This is a really cool way of getting some more crops that maybe you didn't have on your own island, or just getting more of them in general so you can do some cooking with them. It seems like you can find basically every type of crop on these islands, so that is really cool. One of the absolute best new islands, and surprisingly is a common one, is the Vines Island, which also has the glowing moss. Now, I really love this new type of island, as it does give you an incredibly valuable new crafting resource. And if you don't have the DLC, this is basically going to be your main way of getting these two new materials that are used for a lot of different recipes. These islands are cool because you can also find some pretty cool new DIY recipes on them as well. Not only are these islands good for getting these new resources, but they look incredibly cool too as they've got the lighter cliffs, something that you can't normally see anywhere else in the game aside from the DLC. I know a few people still haven't found this one yet, but don't worry, it is one of the more common islands, so unfortunately you might just have gotten unlucky so far, but you definitely should be able to find it at some point. It's not one of the rarest ones like we're going to see later on in this list. One island that is apparently common yet I've only seen once in all of my travels is the Raining Gyroids Island. And this is an island with a lot of rain where you can actually find full gyroids that have already grown, I guess. So usually you'd have to water the fragments, but this time around you can just find them whole, which is actually really cool and it's a nice way of just getting gyroids quickly. On this island I went to, I found two gyroids, but maybe you could potentially find more, I'm not sure. Usually you tend to see one gyroid fragment per island, so finding two of them was definitely cool, but it'd be nice if you could go to an island that was just absolutely covered in gyroid dig spots. That would be fantastic, though maybe it'd be a little bit too easy to collect all of the different ones if you did that, so maybe that wouldn't be the best idea, honestly. So those are all of the common islands that we know about, but how about the rare islands, and how exactly do you unlock them? Well, one island type that we should definitely talk about is the seasonal islands. There is basically an island for every single season. For example, there is a bamboo island where you can get young spring bamboo, which you wouldn't be able to get on a normal bamboo island unless your game was set in spring. There's also one which is a cherry blossom island where you can get all of the cherry blossoms, and you can also find seasonal DIY recipes on all of these islands as well, which is something that I feel like I should mention since it is a really cool way of getting them. You don't have to hunt seasonally throughout those balloons now. There's a type of island that is covered in summer shells, so if you need those, then you can do that there. There are two autumn ones, one that has maple leaves and then another that has mushrooms. I've been to the mushrooms one once and it was just absolutely covered in mushrooms, so that would honestly be a really good way of making bells, and not only that, getting all the materials that you need. Not to mention the fact that fall has a ton of DIY recipes, so this is a pretty good way of getting them. 
One of the absolute rarest islands that you can potentially find is the Star Fragments Island where you can actually get star fragments from the rocks and you can also wish upon shooting stars as well. Now this one is insanely cool but of course like all of these other ones it's going to be a lot trickier to actually find so you might have to get very lucky if you want to see this one. I've personally only seen this one once myself. Now, this might sound a little bit complicated, but if you want to unlock these rarer islands, it actually depends on how long you've been playing the game for. The website Animal Crossing World actually explains the dates that you would need to meet if you want to unlock some of these different islands if you're a new player. If you've been playing for over a year, then you probably don't need to worry about this, but if you are a newer player, you might want to keep these dates in mind, as it might be why you can't find these rarer islands yet, and you tend to see a lot of the same ones again and again. Either way, it is really interesting to me that they decided to lock these behind a time gate. It means that you will have to progress in the game and see these events for yourself before you can get these islands, so you can't just get all of these resources ahead of time. It is worth noting that on these seasonal islands I mentioned, you can actually find out of season bugs, fish and sea creatures, which means that completing that encyclopedia has never been easier. Now of course you will have to get lucky enough to be able to see these in the first place, but if you do manage to see them, then you'll definitely be able to find some of these out of season creatures. Now it seems like there's one more type of island that I haven't mentioned yet and I'm not sure if this one will require some kind of time gate, I'm guessing it won't, but this one is the Money Tree Island. That's right, you can find an island that is full of money trees. Now unfortunately, each tree will only give you 1000 bells per bell bag on the tree, so that's 3000 bells per tree, which isn't a ton honestly, but it is just really cool and of course you can dig these up and bring them back to your own island if you want to display some money trees. It's hard to say, but it does seem like this island is in the second category of being a rarer one, as honestly, on all of my travels, I've only seen it one single time, and I haven't seen other people see it too much either. Although you can dig up the money trees and also the bamboo trees if you'd like to, you cannot dig up things like cherry blossom trees or autumn trees and expect them to look like that when you bring them back to your own island, they will turn back to normal, so unfortunately you can't have those seasonal trees around your island unless it is that time of the year. Honestly, I love these special island tours. It kind of feels like every time you go on one, you also tend to see a DIY recipe on the beach as well. And since you can find those seasonal DIY recipes and brand new ones as well that they introduce in this update, like cooking recipes, it's definitely worth going to these islands every single day so you can see what you can find. Let me know in the comments section down below which of these mystery islands have you discovered yet. I'd love to hear which ones you've found, and if I've missed anything in this video that you want to point out, definitely leave a comment down below. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to comment Bob's Gang down below so I know you did. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and turn on those channel notifications for more Animal Crossing videos. I want to give a big thanks to these channel members for their continued support of me and what I do here on this channel. If you want to become a channel member, click the join button down below the video or the link in the description to learn more. You can get a whole bunch of cool perks like exclusive emojis, a badge by your name, access to our members only discord and our members only podcast too.